Greetings, fellow mathematicians. We're gonna take a look at a, another improper integral in which we'll apply the comparison test. Now I find my students struggle a little bit with this in my Calc 2 course, so we'll take our time so that way you can understand how to solve this problem with the comparison test. All right, so first, in order to apply the comparison test, you need to have an idea if you think your improper integral is convergent or divergent, because that's gonna help guide you through looking for either a bigger improper integral, if you think yours is convergent. If you think your improper integral is divergent, you would look for a smaller improper integral that's divergent. Now how we find or determine if we want a bigger or smaller function is usually with what I call a large x estimation. So to determine and build our intuition for whether we think this converges or diverges, let's go through a large x estimation. In other words, what does this function behave like when x becomes really big? So we have the function one divided by one plus the square root of x. We're gonna think of x being a really large number. So this will be approximately equal for large values of x. And think of square root of a million. That gets a little bit smaller due to what happens when you take square roots of numbers. But as you let x become bigger and bigger, the square root of x part is gonna be much bigger than one. In other words, this one doesn't really do anything when you have square root of x being added to that for large values of x. So we'll get rid of the insignificant part, one, and this function behaves like one divided by square root of x. And you usually wanna think of the p integral. You can rewrite the square root of x as x to the one half power. And this turns into, if we're thinking of an improper integral with that function, the improper integral from one to infinity of one over x to the one half power, and that is a divergent p integral since the value for p here is one half which is less than one. All right, now what this suggests to us, but it doesn't prove, it suggests that our improper integral is also divergent. Now with that in mind, what do we look for if we think our improper integral is divergent? Well, we would wanna find a smaller improper integral that we know is divergent. So if we think of our function here in the middle, we wanna find something smaller, we can do that by making the denominator bigger. Now there's a few ways you can do this. Let's consider our function here, one divided by one plus square root of x. We can make that one any number that's bigger and we will get a smaller fraction or smaller function. So let's go with a number bigger than one. We're gonna make our denominator bigger. Let's say we replace one with 10. All right, and that comparison, that inequality is certainly true. This expression is certainly bigger than that one. And we achieve that by starting with our function and then making the denominator bigger. Now, this really, gives you the same type of function, you have a constant plus square root of x. We ideally wanna to try to get just a power of x in the denominator, so that way we can use the p integral. Now, this is okay, it's mathematically correct, but we're gonna to try to find a special term that makes the denominator bigger here but allows me to combine some like terms. And what we're going to use
is the fact that square root of x is bigger, greater than or equal to one for all values of x from one to infinity. One to infinity, that's our interval here for your values of x. So what I can do to have some like terms to add is let me replace this one with something bigger, square root of x. So we have the original square root of x there, but now I'm gonna replace one with square root of x. And notice this allows me to combine these together. I have square root of x plus square root of x. That's two of the same like term. I can write this as one over two square root of x. And that is the tricky part. We just figured out the appropriate term to make the one bigger by. So we're using that fact that square root of x is bigger than one. And that's the key here because now this is the same thing as one over two times x to the one half. The factor of two is not important, but that x to the one half in the denominator is. So we can make this precise now. We have our original improper integral. So the improper integral from one to infinity of one divided by one plus square root of x. And based off of our inequality here, our comparison, we're saying this is bigger than the improper integral of this function. So the improper integral from one to infinity of one over x to the one half and the two in the denominator, let me pull it out as a factor of one half using property of, of integrals. All right, and this completes it because now this is a divergent p integral, p is one half, And by the comparison test, if the smaller improper integral is divergent, that implies that the bigger improper integral is divergent. So by the comparison test, we reach the conclusion that this improper integral is divergent. The key step here was thinking that square root of x is bigger than one which allowed us to combine those like terms together to get a comparison with a simple p integral in the case where p is one half. All right, hopefully this explanation pointed out how we make use of this way to find comparisons, either a bigger or smaller function. This pops up enough that you'll wanna understand it so that way you can be successful in your Calc 2 course. If you enjoy the content, if you're learning a lot, support the channel, like and subscribe.